Hey Resurrection students, Leah here, one of your student ministry directors, and I've got to tell you, I've had a song stuck in my head all day. I bet you recognize it. You've got a friend in me. Mm -hmm. You've got a friend in me. Do you know this song? Yeah, you know this song, right? It's from the movie Toy Story. This great promise between Andy and his beloved toy, Woody. And then we'd see how Woody and Buzz Lightyear would make the promise to each other and all the other awesome toys. Ugh, I love that movie and I love that song. And I've been thinking about our discussion today, about the covenants or promises we make with others. And just to remind ourselves, a covenant is essentially a powerful promise. It's a relationship between two people who make a binding promise to each other and work together to reach a common goal. And they're different from a contract because they're relational and personal. And we find that type of powerful promise in the story of two amazing women in the Bible named Ruth and Naomi. And as I'm reading their story, I keep hearing this song, you've got a friend in me. And specifically the part in the song that says, you got troubles, I've got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and see it through cause you've got a friend in me. <laughs> And boy, were Ruth and Naomi facing some real troubles, uh, some real pain and hardship. You see, Ruth was married to Naomi's son. Naomi was Ruth's mother-in-law. And not only did Naomi's husband die, but also her sons, including Ruth's husband. And these women were, were left destitute. And when we, we meet them in the story, it says Naomi tried convincing Ruth to leave her altogether and go back to her family, back to her homeland. But Ruth wasn't having it. She felt God's call to keep her promise to Naomi and her new family. Let's read what happens between Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Orpah, after their husbands die. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, look, your sister-in-law is returning to her people and to her gods. Turn back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to abandon you, to turn back from following after you. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me and more so if even death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her about it. This is quite a powerful covenant. Wherever you go, I go. Your God is my God. Where you die, I will die. Can you hear it? You've got a friend in me. I mean, this last line says it all in the song. It says, and as the years go by, our friendship will never die. You're gonna see it's our destiny. Oh, you've got a friend in me. Mm. And Ruth did. She kept her promise and she and Naomi went through life together on this journey, ups and downs, and they were blessed by God and by one another. Now, have you ever made a promise to someone that required a lot of you? Have you promised something to or, or with someone that took a lot of time and commitment to carry out? Maybe it was uh, making a promise to your parents to help with a family event, but it meant you couldn't do something else you wanted to with your friends. Maybe you promised your friend you'd be there for them every day to study for a test or practice for an audition or tryouts. 
Maybe you have a friend right now who is going through a really low time in their life and you promise to call them every day to check in on them or hang out with them after school. You know, when you make these promises, do you know how important they are? And what a difference it makes when you keep that promise and see it through? Jesus knew the importance of these two. The importance of, of letting others know that they have a friend in you. One that is willing to make a powerful promise, a covenant to go through all the ups and downs on the road trip of life and be there for one another in community. When Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment, the greatest requirement in a covenant relationship with God? Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. All the, the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. Making a promise to stand by someone in need is at the top of God's desire for us. When we make a promise to God to live and love like Jesus, that means loving others in the same way by keeping promises and committing to not leaving friends when they need you the most. When I married my husband, I made this type of covenant. And when I came on staff with Resurrection students, I made a promise to love God with all of me and love you all as I love myself. And students, there are three promises in this command from Jesus. Did you catch them all? To love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Those all go hand in hand. And the promises we make to God, our neighbor, and ourselves are reliant on loving all three well. Let's encourage one another to keep making these covenants with one another, ourselves, and to God. This covenant to go on life's journey together because as Jesus shows us, we need one another. And remember students, You've got a friend in me.